Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat and the session we're going to be looking at IAS2 which, which deals with inventories. This topic is covered in the international accounting course as well as the CPA exam. You are expected to know the difference between how US GAAP treats inventory versus IFRS. As always I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, I strongly encourage you to create one. YouTube is where I house all my lectures. Please subscribe, like my lectures, like them, play, put them in playlist, share them with others, let the world know about them. If you're benefiting from my YouTube, it means other people might benefit as well. This is my Instagram account. I'm trying to grow. And this is my Facebook account. I do have some premium accounts or some premium product on Gumroad. And this is my website. So let's start to talk about inventory. What is inventory? Basically, inventory is an asset. To be more specific, it's a current asset. What's inventory? Inventory, when, we, when you buy something for $10, that's your cost. Then you turn around and you sell it for something other than $10, hopefully for more than $10. So you bought something for $10 and we're going to call this $10 is the cost. And you're going to go ahead and sell it, whatever you sold, that product that you sold, let's assume for $15. Okay, so you, you bought a computer or a calculator or a telephone, whatever you bought, you bought it for 10, you sold it for 15. The cost, the cost of that item is your inventory cost. And that's what inventory is. Now we have to understand that IFRS provide more extensive guidance than US GAAP. So the IFRS, they, 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 they go a little bit more into details on how, on how they cover uh, inventories. What, what would the cost of inventories include for IFRS? Well, it include the cost of the purchase, obviously how much it costs you, plus any import duties. What are import duties? If you buy something from overseas from another country, you might have to pay taxes. You might have to pay other taxes other than import duties. You might have to pay transportation to get that asset, to get that inventory to your warehouse. You might have to pay handling costs. All of these are considered cost of your inventory. Now, if you are converting the inventory, in other words, if you are buying raw material or you are buying inventory, then you are doing minor conversion. What can you, what can you include? Well, you can include your direct labor, the labor that you incurred, and you can include systematic allocation of variable and fixed production overhead using, be, be careful, normal level. What is normal level? It means this is how you operate on, in a normal circumstances and you would allocate the overhead, wh whether it's variable or fixed, based on a normal level. Now, now, if you don't know what a normal level is, if you don't know what overhead, variable and fixed, go to my managerial or cost accounting course on YouTube. But this is what, what this is what you are expected to allocate. The third item, it might include other costs such as design. So if you're designing a product, you have to pay money for that. That's part of your inventory. Also interest if it takes time to bring to bring to a saleable condition. Sometimes you might have to include interest costs. I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to get, you know, we're not going to bug ourselves with interest. But if you really think about it, all of these items, one, two, and three, basically you can summarize it as any cost that's going to prepare your inventory for a saleable condition. So any cost necessary to bring your inventory to a saleable location and condition it's considered inventory cost. It's part of your inventory cost. Now, there are certain items that you, uh, IFRS explicitly exclude, and those are abnormal waste of material and other production. So if you are producing something and you incur not normal, abnormal, it means more than normal. Now, what's considered normal and abnormal? The company itself, they will decide based on their production level what's considered normal waste and what's considered abnormal. If it's abnormal, then guess what? It's not inventory. It becomes an expense. It's basically a loss. Okay. Also, you would exclude storage unless it's necessary for the production process. So storage you know, just for the sake of the storage, it's not it's not included. If it's for the production necessary, notice here it's necessary for the production process, then storage cost would be included. Administrative overhead definitely would not be included. And selling cost is basically selling expense. The the expense to sell the product basically it's an expense. It's an effort you are undertaking to sell the product. It is not. It is not a. It's not an asset. So you have to make sure you understand what's considered inventory and what's considered not inventory. Now on the exam, you might be 
ask a simple question as administrative overhead to administrative for inventory purposes. That's not inventory. Okay, so just make sure you know what's included and what's not. And the best way to illustrate this is to let's take a look at an, an, at an example just to see how this all fits together. As a result of a downturn in the economy, Optiplex Corporation has excess productive capacity. On January 1st, year 3, Optex signed a special order contract to manufacture custom design generator for a new customer. The customer requested that generator be ready to, to pick up by June 15, year 3, and guarantee it will take possession of the generator by July 15th. So just keep it for us for a month. Optiplex has incurred the following direct costs related to the design. So they cost to complete the design, $3,000. Purchase price of material and parts, 80000 Transportation cost to get the material and any parts of the manufacturing facility, $2,000. Direct labor, 10000 direct labor at a $12 per rate, at, at a rate of $12, $120,000. Cost to store finished product from June 15th to June 30th, $2,000. Also, because of the company and experience in manufacturing generators of this design, the cost of material and part included in an abnormal way included an abnormal amount waste totaling of 5,000. So the cost of material here, the cost of material, there's $5,000 of that is because we're, we don't have experience with the production of this design of this uh, generator. This is abnormal. And remember, what do we do with abnormal? Guess what? It's not included in inventory. It's expense, but let's see but the question is, in addition to direct costs, Optiplex apply variable and fixed overhead to inventory using predetermined overhead rate. Once again, if this statement doesn't make any sense to you, go to my managerial accounting or cost accounting. The variable overhead rate is $2 per direct labor hour, and the fixed overhead based on a normal level of activity is $6 per direct labor hour. Given the decreased level of the production expected in year three, Optiplex estimate a fixed overhead application rate of nine dollar per direct labor in year three so normally the the overhead is applied as six dollar per uh, per direct labor hour that's the normal rate because they have a decrease in the production in the level of production because there was a downturn in the economy guess what overhead applied went up to nine now between six and nine which one are we going to be using we're going to be using the normal rate not the abnormal rate okay so the question is determine the amount at which the inventory of custom design generator should be reported on the optiplex corporation june 30th year three balance sheet so simply put tell me when you prepare your balance sheet on june 30th what do you include as part of your inventory well let's start with the three thousand is it the cost to design the product is that included of course it is so the design is included design cost purchase price for the material now purchase price is 80,000 but included in that is 5,000 of abnormal therefore I'm only gonna include 75,000 so 80,000 minus 5 I'm only gonna, I'm only gonna include 75,000 as parts I'm not gonna say 80,000 because if I really, if I really, if I was careful, if my employees were well trained, then I wouldn't have to do incur that five thousand. Transportation cost to get the material and parts ready for the manufacturing facility. Do you think that's included? Of course, you cannot produce unless you get those manufacturing, unless you get the parts to the facility. Direct labor, ten ten thousand hours at twelve dollar per hour. Sure, it is. I incur direct labor related to the production. That's included. That's 120,000. Sorry, it keeps skipping. 120,000. Cost to store finished product. Okay, so hold on a second, $2,000. Now, what did we say about storage cost? Storage cost, it says here, uh, storage unless necessary for the production process. That's not necessary for the production process. We already produced the product. So that 2000 is not included. Okay. Now we are left with uh, overhead. Okay. So we incurred 10, 000, the overhead is applied on a direct labor hour. So we incurred 10,000 direct labor hour. So the fixed overhead is times six. Why times six? Because that's the normal level of production rate six. So 
So sixty thousand dollar is the fixed overhead. That's sixty thousand dollar. So this is the this is all the the cost. So thirty thousand plus seventy five plus two plus one twenty plus sixty. Okay. Let's see, did I miss anything? Oh, the direct labor 120, I included that. Oh, variable, we included the fix, we didn't include the variable. Variable rate is $2 per direct labor hour. I, I skipped the variable rate. So let me, so this is the fixed, sorry. This is the fixed overhead rate. This is the fixed. And the variable is 10,000 hours times two is 20,000. That's the variable production cost. Now, if I added all of this, it should add up to 280,000. And this will be my reported inventory as, uh, as, as of June 30th. Now, 15 days later, I'm gonna sell it. It becomes cost of goods sold, okay? But this is basically what the question is asking. Let's take a look at a few other topics that deals with inventory. And the other thing we have to worry about is cost flow assumption. What is a cost flow assumption? If you remember FIFO, LIFO, the weighted average, um, specific identification. For one thing, IFRS does not allow LIFO. So as far as IFRS is concerned, LIFO is a gimmick. They don't allow last and first out. So which method are, are accepted? Well, FIFO is accepted first in, first out, and weighted average. Now, if you're saying, hold on a second, what is this? FIFO, LIFO, or FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average. I have no clue what you're talking about. Well, guess what? Go to my intermediate accounting, and I believe chapter eight and nine deals in depth about inventory. So if you don't know how LIFO, FIFO work, well, I hope you do by this time, but if you don't, go back to, to my intermediate accounting. So the, the so li, LIFO is not, FIFO and weighted average are. You might be saying, hold on a second, is, isn't there a fourth method called specific identification? Well, specific identification is not a cost flow assumption. It's, that's what actually happens, okay? So standard cost method and retail method are acceptable only if they approximate cost as per I IAS2. So you could use standard costing, you could use the retail method, as long as they approximate the cost. Okay, those two other methods, again, if you don't know what they are, retail method, you learn this in intermediate accounting and standard costing in, manager in managerial accounting. Now cost of inventory, not ordinarily interchangeable, like unique inventory, this is where you would use the specific identification method. Cost of uh, goods of and services produced and segregated for specific projects. So if you are making a specific product for someone, guess what? You would use the specific identification method as well. This is when you would use the specific identification, okay? An entity must use the cost formula for similar inventory items. What does that mean? It means if you're using LIFO or weighted average, you have to use the same cost formula for similar inventory. In the US, you don't have to do so. For some items, you could use one method. For the other items, you cannot use. So they have more flexibility. IFRS, you have, this, you have to use the same method. Also, the IFRS or IAS2 require inventory to be reported at lower of cost or NRV net realizable value. What does that mean? It means you have to look at your cost and compare your cost, compare your cost, versus NRV, net realizable value, and select the item that's lower of the two. So lower of the two is what gets reported. So after you after you do FIFO and LIFO, or, I'm sorry, LIFO, after you do FIFO or weighted average, you come up with your, all your inventory. Then how do you assign a dollar amount? Well, you either have to use the cost, the original cost of the inventory, or NRV, whichever is lower. Typically, you would apply the N, the this, this method, lower of cost or NRV, on an item on an item by item basis usually that's how you would report the uh, NRV okay write down are reversed when selling prices increases so if you write something down and we're going to work an example IFRS would allow you to go back and reverse it obviously reverse it up to your original cost but the fact that you can reverse it US gap uses the same approach in computing NRV because they used they used to use a different approach now IFRS and GAP they use the same approach in determining lower of cost or NRV this is part of the convergence process however IFRS does not allow you to reverse any write downs simply put once you write down an inventory US GAP you cannot write it up and 
back in the old days, not long ago, we used to we used to teach the concept of floor and ceiling when it comes to inventory. Inventory when we are trying to cal compute NRV, NRV. That's no longer the case. We no longer have to use this floor and ceiling. That's gone. This concept is gone. Gap, abandon it. So how do we compute then lower of cost or market? Well, let's work an example to see. Okay, that's the best way to illustrate this concept. So let's assume we bought an item and we bought it for a thousand dollar. That's the cost for us, a thousand dollar. Cost is a thousand. Estimated selling price, 880. Notice that the estimated selling price is lower than the cost. Therefore, we have to do something. Estimated cost to, to sell is $50. Well, guess what? When we take the estimated selling price minus the cost to sell, which will give us something called NRV. So now this is the NRV. The cost, the historical cost, is the cost of $1,000. Now, we bought something for $1,000. Let's assume that's a computer, which is which is very common that you bought a computer for $1,000 and did not sell. Six months later, it's only selling for $880. That's pretty normal in the industry. So which number would you report? Would you report the $830 or would you report the $1,000? Well, since we are being conservative, you have to report $830 of your as inventory on your balance sheet. Well, what does that mean? It means you have to write down your inventory. You have to write it down to the net realizable value. The net realizable value is 830. That's all what you can get, even if you sell it today. Well, you have to take a loss. Well, what you do is you debit, which you would increase a loss. You will debit a loss and you credit, which is you would reduce inventory for 170. What you did is you wrote down you wrote down your inventory by $170. You took the loss. Now, sometimes this $50, now it's given estimated cost to sell is, is uh, $50. Sometimes what they would say, they would say something like this. They would say, um, cost to sell is 5% of sale. So what you do is you take your selling price, which is a thousand dollar, whatever your selling price is, times whatever your selling price times that rate to find out what's the estimated cost to sell. Now let's assume at the end of the first quarter and year two, replacement cost has increased to nine hundred. So if you want to buy it, it's nine hundred. The estimated selling price has increased to nine eighty, and the estimated cost to to sell remained at nine fifty. Now you have to compute the new NRV. 980 the estimated selling price minus cost to replace 50 your new nrv is 930 so your new nrv is 930 remember now have to compare your nrv which is this is 930 you have to compare your nrv 930 to your historical cost of a thousand. Your historical cost is still a thousand. Well, what do you have to report? The, def the lower of these two, the lower of these two is 930. But hold on a second. You already wrote it down to 830 earlier. A earlier, you wrote down your inventory to 830. Can you write it up to 930? And the answer is yes. Under IFRS, the this $100 is greater than the carrying amount and $70 less than its historical cost. So you are allowed under IFRS to write up, to write your inventory, to, to reverse your losses. So you will debit inventory, you would increase inventory and you will credit an income account recovery of inventory loss. So basically you recovered, you remember last year you wrote it down, last year you wrote it down 170. Now you wrote it up 100, okay? You could write it up, up until the, the historical cost okay but um, but under US gap you can do so under US gap once it's down to 830 once you write it down to 830 this becomes your new historical cost the 830 once you write it down so in the prior set in the prior um, we wrote it down to 830 once you write it down to 830 Let's assume the inventory recovered, you can't, you cannot write it up. So once it's written down, the 830 becomes your new historical cost. And guess what? If your inventory is really worth more, well, you're going to sell it. And when you sell it, you can book it as a profit. So this is still a difference between US GAAP and IFRS. You cannot reverse, um, you cannot reverse once 
LCM is applied. Once LCM is applied, it becomes your new cost under US GAAP. Under IFRS, you can recover some of that. Uh, you can recover previously written down inventory costs. If you have any questions, any comments about this topic, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Good luck.